In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. At the beginning of the Mass, I saw Monsignor Dillon directing traffic, and he was making sure there was space between all the uh, graduates and making sure that things flow nicely. This Mass we celebrate is the votive Mass of the Holy Spirit, who has been guiding the Church for 2,000 uh, years. And so the Holy Spirit is also guiding these young people as they move forward from Holy Spirit prep with their lives, but their lives are hidden in God as well. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins now and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I praise those godly men, our ancestors, each in his own time. But of others there is no memory, for when they ceased, they ceased. And they are as though they had not lived, they and their children after them. Yet these also were godly men, whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their family endures their posterity for their sake. And for all time, their progeny will endure. Their glory will never be blotted out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let them pray. 
praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his name. the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Hallelujah. The Lord takes delight in his peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything, and since it was already late, went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree and leaf, he went over to see if he could find anything on it. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it and were seeking a way to put him to death, yet they feared him because the whole crowd was astonished at his teachings. When everything, when evening came, they went out to the city. Early in the morning, as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. Jesus said to them in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, I say to you. Whoever says to the mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, 
so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive you your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was speaking with the confirmation, some of you, before Mass, <clears throat> and I was asking the question, where are you going You know, after here? Uh, one was going to Massachusetts. I think you're going to Syracuse. Um, others are more local. Uh, one is going to be studying fashion design <clears throat> and really like my miter, so I don't know if she'll des design a new miter for the bishop. My brothers don't like my mitre, so I just something about um, fashion, I guess. The word baccalaureate um, is a big word. It has its roots basically in a young man aspiring for knighthood, or it could be a young woman aspiring to be knighted. We wouldn't call her an, a sir; we call her a dame or a dame, damehood. When people have um, victories and so forth, they get a laurel, so baccalaureate, a laurel wreath is some kind of achievement, especially for athletes in the time of the Greeks. They would crown the, the winner of a race with a laurel leaf, a crown of laurel leaves. I know all of you here are aspiring to something great in the future, uh, the word aspire comes from the Latin to breathe towards. So we get the spirare, the, the word to breathe. And we get the word spirit from it as well. If we perspire, it's we're breathing through the body. To aspire is to breathe toward. To expire is to take the breath out of some someone or something and to... Um, inspire us to breathe into. So we're hoping that you will be inspired not by uh, things that you will do or learn, but you will be inspired by the Holy Spirit whom we celebrate today. There's a lot of challenges in moving forward in life. We know that God doesn't call us to be successful in life. He calls us to be faithful. You may know where you're going next year, but it's my prayer that you will know who is leading you. That's a big thing to learn. Who is leading you into the future? Not where you are going and how you will do it, but who is leading you. And you're not called to be self-sufficient, although your parents, I'm sure, would, would love it that you could pay your own bills and and get off their bank account, maybe, or something. They'll take care of you. But unless we become children of God, we shall not enter the kingdom of God. So this is why we call God Father, and we ask for God to bestow on us riches that we can never imagine. In the Gospel today, we heard about praying, asking, and believing that you've already received it. I think children have that confidence that they ask something from their parents, they think they're going to get it. But when we get a little older in life, we stop perhaps praying, and we think, well, we've got to get it for ourselves, that God's not going to provide. Uh, it's not going to come the way we want it to come. And so where is our faith then in our relationship with the Father? Today we hear about the temple in the gospel, being a marketplace filled with 
money changers, buying and selling, profit and bargaining. And if you think about the market, if you go to the grocery store, I usually go to get something and you're looking at the price and you just say, if this is, is this a bargain, is it worth it, and so forth. Ultimately, you're thinking, what's in my best interest? And of course, the grocery store is thinking the best. They might give you coupons and all kinds of things, but they're also thinking how to get their customers to come back and what's in the best interest of the store and so forth. If we're thinking about what's in my best interest in life, we may neglect to, to live our life for other people for their best interests. I would hope that Christians are dedicated to serving the poor rather than living for their own uh, well-being. They learn how to lay down their lives as Jesus did. They learn how to live the mystery that we celebrate at the Mass. This is my body. This is my blood given for you. Do this in memory of me. We want a fulfilled, fulfilling life. The word fulfilled means to be full, filled to the full. And we want to become like reservoirs, so we just be filled up with, with completeness, and then or be, the reservoir actually, when it's full, starts spilling over um, to other, in other ways. And we want our life to be like that, full of God, spilling over into the lives of other people. We never want to be empty. But what will fill your lives is a real question. Um, people are looking all for all kinds of substances and things to say, I want to be filled with that. I want to experience this. And ultimately, they feel themselves empty. And only God can fill the deeper longing of the heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures. My cup is running over. This is the most important thing to learn in life. Not where you are going, but who is leading you and helping you and loving you and giving you the fullness of life. As Jesus said, I came that they might have life to the full, abundantly, eternal life. Today we hear in the gospel about the fig tree. Now, I know you all go to school to learn about stuff. So let me talk about fig trees for a minute because I looked it up in the internet. You have to be very patient when you plant a fig tree. It takes three to five years usually. Some of you may know this more about this than, than what I read, but it takes three to five years before a fig tree will produce fruit. There are some, I'm sure, that can do one or two years maybe, or, but three to five years. It doesn't produce immediately. And I think three to five years, you've been in high school for four years. <laughs> so what fruit now is going to be produced, you know, in the future? But the thing about fig trees is there, there needs to be a pruning process involved. So today, Jesus is walking by this fig tree and it has no fruit. It really wasn't the time, I think, for trees to bear fruit. And the fig tree is a symbol also of the house of Israel. And he's going to the marketplace. He's seeing that they're kind of not producing fruit. They're more interested in buying and selling and so forth. But the fig tree is a symbol of fruit that's supposed to be produced after patience and pruning. And we live in a society today where everything is immediate. We want it now. And we must invest in that process that the fig tree goes under. In fact, at an early stage of a fig tree, you're supposed to kind of prune it so that somehow the fig tree is more um, concentrated in developing its root system, rather than putting life into the branches immediately, is trying to get a deeper grounding 
Uh, so eventually, it will be so strong and, and, and life will be in the trunk that when it's time to produce fruit, it will produce abundantly. But you don't, if you don't prune the fig tree, you're not going to get the great harvest that you hope for. Once again, the question is, is who is leading you and what are you grounded in? I know that Catholic schools usually, parents send kids to Catholic school, their children to Catholic school, hopefully for two purposes. One, in order to get you to college, that's many, to have higher education after this. But the other one should be to get you to heaven. And the priority should be heaven first and college second. I hope that you all be, will become saints rather than scholars. And the world needs saints today. The world needs teachers as well. The world needs witnesses, though, more than teachers. And if you are teachers, you must be witnesses. You will teach your companions what is really important to you. Is God important or not? Is he leading you? Are you making room in the temple for the Holy Spirit or in the depth of your soul? Is there a marketplace where Jesus would want to drive out that which is keeping you from the fullness of life. Where are you going from here, or who is leading you? I'll conclude with this uh, couple verses from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And this goes back to the baccalaureate or the laureate, the laurel leaf. Um, Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the race. Run so as to win. I want you all to be winners. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, the laurel crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly, St. Paul says. I do not fight as if I'm shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. We need you to preach the gospel. That was the mission given to you in your baptism, to be a priest, prophet, and king. And the Holy Spirit was given to you in confirmation to strengthen you so that you could witness to this faith without fear. And today we're celebrating the votive mass of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit may fill you with life and fill you with courage and fill you with wisdom and those gifts so that you'll know how to live life to the full. You'll know how to live your life in God. And, my, my, and, my God, and may God bless you on your journey from this day forward in the next phases of life, but may you never forget who is leading you and guiding you. God bless you. To God, the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth.
for the church, that all the faithful may follow the example of Christ in his charity and love for others, so as always to attend to those in need. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will be strengthened with grace and enlightened by God as vicar of Christ on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Gregory John Hartmeyer, Bishop Bernard Schlesinger, and Bishop Joel Konzen, that God may guide them in all his work as they lead the people of Atlanta in living their faith with love and self-giving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, especially those within our own families and community, that they may find meaning in their suffering and experience that Christ is close to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the sanctity of all life, from from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our clergy, consecrated women, trustees, alumni, students, faculty, and staff of Holy Spirit Preparatory School, that through our education and learning, we may always remain faithful to the teachings of our Catholic faith, and become better instruments of his love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our seniors who are about to graduate, that in this next stage of their lives, they may discover in the person of Christ authenticity, apostolic zeal, and courage that they need, and that they may be his witness to the world around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold deep in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, have set the sacrifice at your hands. I praise and glory of his name. For I can it all. O God, sanctify, we pray, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis sunt ceri et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, or temptum annunciamus domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemur done. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, most blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, Bernard and Joel, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate and merciful Father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we have the final blessing, um, I want to say a few words of thanks to Monsignor Dillon, his, um, the, my brother priest, Father Mark, it's good to see you in another parish, at least. And the servers, thank you. They have rank on their collar sometimes. This guy's a colonel over here. I think there's a few generals um, walking around amongst the altar servers. And just to let you know, I was a captain in the Air Force, but not an altar, not as an altar servant. But I think you outranked me. <laughs> so. The... Uh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Prep, what a, what a name, preparatory school. What are you preparing for? And the, the Holy Spirit is the, the first two words. Uh, of course, he's been preparing you for the rest of your life. And so uh, never forget the, the Holy Spirit. The uh, Holy Spirit never speaks of himself. He, the Holy Spirit is always trying to uh, bring Christ more fully into our life. Just as the Holy Spirit did when Mary conceived the word that became flesh, the person of Christ. She became the mother of the God-man um, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit makes Christ present in the world through the Virgin Mary as well as um, in our lives uh, in baptism and then confirmation strengthens us to go forward. Um, the name I like the most about for the Holy Spirit is the Consoler. So if you even make mistakes in your life, whatever they are, big ones, small ones, the Holy Spirit will always try to console you about the love of God, that you can never separate yourself from the love of God, that you will never be able to say, I no longer have a father or I no longer have a savior. The Holy Spirit will confirm us in this truth. The evil spirit will try to get us to doubt that fundamental uh, relationship we have with God, that you made a mistake you messed your life up, and now long you're, you're beyond hope, where the Spirit is the one breathing into us hope. All the saints that we celebrate, they did, were sinners. And all sinners can become saints by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is the joy and the, the love of God which urges us on into the future. And thank you for the wonderful music, especially the Ave Maria. That was just beautiful. So thank you very much. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. May God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.